Welcome everybody. This is the introduction to ADA for all those who want to understand what ADA is about in this world where we have many programming languages. The name of ADA comes from Ada Byron, who was considered the first programmer in history working on Babbage machine. The first standard came up in 1983. Note that it's about the same time as C++, long after C, and just a few years before Python. So for those of you who think that it is an old language, it's in no way older than many of current languages. It was the first industrial language to offer exceptions, generics, tasking, and many higher level features. A major improvement was made in 1995 with the introduction of object-oriented programming, protected objects for um, lower level inter-task communication, hierarchical libraries to better organize projects. Note that EDA was the first standardized object-oriented language about three years before C++. There was another standard in 205, adding interfaces uh, inspired from Java and many other uh, improvements. In 2012, EDA went more formal, more oriented towards uh, formal proofs with contracts, higher level expressions. And the history is still going on we are about to issue a 2022 standard that will especially improve in the area of uh, concurrent computations, parallel um, blocks in parallel loops. EDA is a free language, which is especially uh, important in the context of this first. What does it mean? It's an international standard. It doesn't belong to any maker or to any company. It is freely available, and the working group that control the language are user working group. This is an extract from the ISO standard, and it said, this document may be copied in whole or in part in any form or by any means. The ADA standard is a free standard. And considering how expensive standards are usually, that's something very important. You can find the standard in HTML or any format you want, and you can read the standard. You have free compilers. You also have proprietary compilers and many free resources, components, API, tutorials, and uh, many channels to get help from. Here are some good sites, and also, of course, the usual community uh, chats that you can find, like for any other language. Some examples of people who use ADA. The French TGV, the high-speed train, Airbus and the famous A380, very successful plane, if not commercially. This is the French Line 14 of the subway, which was very successful to the point that it was adopted to renew New York's subway. And this is the Rosetta probe, which proved, which worked absolutely perfectly after five years in space. And also a nice thing like the King Cat luxury boat. And I don't have the picture here, but of course, Ariane 5, and it was so successful that Ada was kept for Ariane 6 rocket. So why would you use Ada? Well, we'll see that Ada has many features to make safe computing. 
So all those systems are system where failure is not an option. But your own software should not fail either. So having a language that will protect you from many flows like buffer overflows, arithmetic problem, illegal pointers, and so on, is a great help also for every day's programming jobs. The basic idea is that EDA checks a lot at compile time. And even design flows can, to a certain extent, be checked at compile time. So it's true that when you write something in EDA, the first shot in general does not compile. So the first reaction of people is to say, well, that damned compiler will not accept what I've written. And then after a while, you realize that there was a design error in your program and that saved you a lot of debugging time. So many languages tell you, look at all those nice features, all the things that are allowed by my language. But in Ada, we tend to say, oh, look at all the things that are forbidden by the language. Because what's important in the language is all the checks it can perform, that is, all the things that it can forbid. So here is a picture illustrating the various parts of Ada. The basis, the concrete base on which the whole language is based, it is a classical procedural language that is with procedure, function, variables, and so on. The syntax is based on Pascal because it was very important to have a readable language, and Pascal appeared as the, better, the best basis for readability. On top of that, you have a very strong typing system, but really very strong compared to other languages. We'll talk a lot about that. Then you have a number of features, each serving a particular goal of software engineering. Packages are here for modularity. Exceptions for runtime safety. Generics for reuse, tasking for concurrency, and also a number of low-level programming features because ADA is used a lot in embedded systems and sometimes you have to handle peripherals, hardware, and so on. So it's important to have a clean access to the low-level features. All these are used to serve programming methodology. Sometimes you hear people saying, well, what's important is to have a good programming methodology. Therefore, we don't mind what coding language we use. In EDA, we take the position that the methodological aspect should not be abandoned when you go to coding phase. The language is here to express the methodology. And that's why you will find so many design errors with EDA, because the concept of the methodology map directly to EDA concept. Therefore, if there is a flow in your design, it will result in a flow in a program that will be caught by the compiler. Of course, we are now proudly supporting object orientation ever since 1995. Then you have the small dog houses on the side. These are kind of extension. These are optional extra packages used for certain uh, special needs, but that not for anybody needs. I'll give you a word about that later. All in all, when you first look at it, EDA looks like a very classical language with all the usual features. But when you use it, you will discover that it's more different than it seems in the way you use the language and in the services provided by the language. 
Ada has a building block approach. To understand what this means, let's compare it to Playmobil against Lego. You know, with Playmobil, you have nice little characters, each designed for a very special purpose. So they perfectly fit the purpose, but there is nothing else you can do. If you have the Playmobil Circus, you can play Playmobil Circus and nothing else. There is even the small characters are not always compatible from a box to another one. The Lego approach is to provide pieces that are of no use by themselves. I mean, if you have just basic blocks like this, there is not much you can do with that. But you, if you assemble those pieces together, then you can make very simple things like that, or very th sophisticated things like this, or even this. So the global syntax is derived from Pascal, as I said, with improvement to make it more readable. For example, here we have a for loop. It clearly says that C will scan over all possible values in type color. And it's protected. You are not allowed to change C inside the loop and C will disappear after the loop. So there is no way to cheat with loop control. You are guaranteed that C will scan over the indicated values and nothing else. You have also an example of a while loop that's quite classical. At the bottom, you can see that you can give a um, name to a loop. And if you give a name to the loop, it must be repeated at the end of the loop. And that's very convenient to match the beginning and the end of the loop. So these are examples to show you the effort of readability that has been put into the language. The if statement is very classical with several parts possible with else if. A special mention for the case statements, that, that the equivalent of the switch case of C and C++. You can give ranges for the values, but all the values, knowing the type of the controlling element here, I, you know, the compiler knows all the possible values. And the compiler checks that all possible values are given in the various branches here of the case statement, or that there is a when others covering all other cases. That's a very useful feature because if you change the type of I and if you forget to do, handle some new cases that you have added, then the compiler will tell you. You can also express not only basic values, but even structure values with, with what is called an aggregate. So for example, if you have a two-dimensional matrix like here, you can express directly the value of a matrix in your code. Or here I have a small example of a you know, linked list. So you see that uh, the variable head you create a new node, so you allocate memory, whose value is initialized to 10,000, and the next element is another new node with uh, some value, and next is null. The idea is to be able to describe directly structured um, data without always getting down to the individual elements. So what do we call a strong typing system? Here I define a type age, the age of a person, as ranging from 0 to 125. And floors in a building ranging from minus 5 to 15. I can declare and use variables of those types. 
assign values, but I cannot mix them. Even if the values are compatible, since they represent different abstractions, you are not allowed to mix them. This might seem very obvious. You've been told for a long, long time you, that you cannot mix apple and oranges, but Ada is the only language that provides that kind of control for your own types, especially for elementary types. The idea is that whenever you define an abstraction, some kind of type resulting from your problem domain, like an age, a floor, these are elements from the problem domain. Those types must be mapped into the machine, and the machine only knows about bytes, ints, longs, floats, things like that. All other languages provide you access only to the machine level. The int in C or in other languages is just the machine level types. Therefore, you have to do the mapping, the implementation choice, to implement your high level types onto the machine. The new thing in ADA is that you describe directly at the level, at problem level, the types that you need, and that the compiler will do the mapping, accessing the most appropriate machine type. And that will provide you immediately independence to the implementation. You don't care about the machine because the compiler is doing that mapping. Packages are a fundamental feature of ADA. They allow you to group into well-defined modules, data, types, or associate operation to data. For example, this package, a column manager, provides you with a type known color, and that type is marked private. It means, OK, there is a type, that type is called color, but it's independent from implementation. You don't tell the user of the package how that type is implemented. Therefore, it's really abstract. You can have also visible type like density, which is a fixed point type, by the way. So it's a type with regular values ranging from 0 to 1 with a step of 1 over 256. You can define colors here. These are constant. So you know that you have a red, a green, a blue color, but you still don't know how it's implemented. It's independent. And you can provide operation like adding mixing to colors or changing the intensity of a color by multiplying it by a certain coefficient. Of course, the user does not have access to the concrete implementation. But the compiler needs to know how it's implemented. Therefore, if you define a private type, you will have a private part that will tell to the compiler the truth of the type. So here we see that the color is made of three values of type density. And here are the values for the red, green, and blue constants. But that is not usable for the external user, its private part to the compiler. And the operations will be implemented in what is called the body of the package. The user of the package has no access to the body. It's purely implementation. And to tell the truth, you can even use that package even before the body is written. Therefore, you have a complete independence between the specification, the abstract specification, and the implementation of your abstract data type. Here is a user of that package. If you want to paint something, when 
you do the color manager, you can define a vi variable of type color as half blue plus half red. If you want to change the color, you can use a multiplication, but not a division, simply because there is no division defined on type color. Of course, you, you could have defined one, but here I didn't. So if you try to use an inappropriate operation, it will, not, it will be rejected by the compiler. So abstractions are really enforced because you have that clean separation between what the user sees and how it's implemented. Note that when you use a package, you must name it in what is called a whiz clause. Every dependence between modules is clearly stated in those whiz clauses. So it's easy to see the graph of dependencies. And therefore, we don't need no dirty make file in Ada, because the compiler knows what modules depend on what other modules. And when you recompile, the compiler is able to recompile only things that are affected by a change and nothing else. Another interesting feature of the language is discriminative types. This is something that has almost no equivalent in other languages. A type can have parameters called discriminants. Here, yeah? you see you have discriminants that work a bit like parameters to a data type. Here I have a student record, and you have three majors, letters, sciences, and technology. And of course, you can grade from 0 to 20. Well, sorry, that's the French grading system with numbers. Everybody has a name defined as a string, and the length of the name is given by the parameter. Everybody has a grade in English or in math, and depending on your major, if you have a major in letters, then you have a grade in Latin. If you have a major in sciences, then you will have grades in physics and chemistry, or in technology, you have a grade in drawing. So you have flexible data structures, and which components or the size of components can depend on those parameters, on those discriminants. The object-oriented model of EDA is uh, quite original. That's a typical use of the building blocks approach I described earlier. Packages support encapsulation. There is a special kind of types called tag type that support dynamic binding. A class in the usual sense is encapsulation plus dynamic binding. Therefore, it's built by assembling those pieces. It's, there is no class reserved word in ADA. A class is a special design pattern where you put a tag type into a package. So for example, here you, here is a classical widget. I call the type instance because I, that allows me to write it as a widget.instance, which is quite readable, with an operation on the instance called paint. Then if I want to define a menu that inherits from a widget, a menu is a widget. I derive a new type widget dot, from widget.instance. So I said that a menu.instant is a new kind of widget.instance with some extra elements. And I can keep those extra elements private. You can also have them visible. But in that example, they are private. And I can redefine an operation 
for menu. Actually, this is a method. Note that I didn't talk about pointers. In ADA, object-oriented programming is absolutely not related to pointers. You can do perfect, good object-oriented programming with pointers. Of course, we have pointers in ADA for linked list, data structures, and so on but it's not required for object-oriented programming, which also is a big improvement since uh, having no pointers is much safer in general. In every uh, type, tag type, define an associated type managed by the compiler called the class-wide type. So here I have a hierarchy of widgets. So I have windows and I have a menu. And menu have pop-up menus, scroll down menus, and so on, classical inheritance tree. All those types are called specific types. These are the usual types. Associated to each specific type, there is what is called a class-wide type so it's automatically generated by the compiler with the name of the basic type with tick class behind it. So widget tick class is defined as containing all the values of widget and all the types that are derived from widget. A type in ADA is a set of values. So the set of values of widget tick class is the set of values of everything which is a widget which is derived of the whole inheritance tree. In a sense, in ADA, we make the difference between the widget itself, that the specific type, and the widget family, which is widget tick class. That's quite original and has a lots of implication. For example, I can define a procedure to move an item, but the same algorithm is applicable to all the kinds of widget. Therefore, I can have a parameter here of type widget the class, which means that that procedure can be called with any kind of widget. And I can call arrays on that item, change its position, paint it again, and so on. If I define two variables, one which is a popup.instance, another which is a window.instance, since these values all belong to widget the class, I can call move on either of these. And note that each of these specific types has a different implementation of arrays and paint. Therefore, at runtime, the compiler will call the appropriate operation considering the real, the specific type of the parameter. So if, if it's a pop-up, you will call the, the arrays for pop-up. If it's a, uh, window, you will call the arrays for window. That's dynamic linking. Okay. Note that in uh, starting from ADA 205, if you prefer the object dot method notation, you can move the first parameter before the operation, uh, roughly the same way as you would do in Python. Starting from 205, interfaces have been added that uh, work a lot like Java interfaces. And the principle is the same. A type can be derived from one full tag type and several interfaces. Interfaces are kind of abstract tag types, but there is a small improvement over Java. They can also have null methods, methods that are defined as doing nothing, that serve as optional methods, for example. 
For example, if I define a persistence service, something that can be read or written, then if I want to implement that interface, I must provide a read and a write method. Then I can have a persistent window that claims that it is derived, it inherits from window.instance, of course, and that it implements the services of persistence. Ada has exceptions. Exceptions are, well, now most people know about exceptions. It was not so common when Ada was first released, but now many languages provide exceptions. A big difference is that exceptions were built into the language right from the start. So everything that can go wrong at runtime will raise an exception. The, in EDA, we don't say we throw an exception, we say that we raise an exception. The model is more like a trap, if you want. So even errors that are caught by the runtime, like accessing outside of an array, buffer overflow, dereferencing a null pointer, or even uh, device malfunctioning or memory violation that can happen almost in, only in imported code. All those things, everything that can happen bad at runtime will translate into an exception. And every exception can be handled. The mantra is that once you've taken care of the unexpected, you must take care of the unexpected unexpected. The nice thing with exception is that you can have a one others that allows you to handle even everything that is totally unexpected. For SIF systems, systems that have to work 24-7, it's very important to handle by program everything that can happen. If you have a probe or a satellite orbiting the Earth, you certainly cannot go to it and, pry and press control alt del the software must handle everything. Generics are a way to, um, to provide reuse. The trouble with strong typing is that if you design an algorithm for a certain type, you cannot reuse it for a different type. So generics are a way to provide algorithms that can be instantiated, used on any data type, provided that the data type features a certain number of required properties. So here is an example. If I want to swap two variables, well, apparently you know the algorithm, and that can be used for every variable. But that's not true. Because in EDA, for example, we have what is called limited types, and limited types do not have assignments. They are strictly controlled, so assignment uh, is not available. So you can swap variables if the type provides assignment. So the syntax here tells that you can instantiate that swap generic on every type which is at most private. Private type have assignment, but since it doesn't say limited, you cannot instantiate this generic unlimited types. And the compiler will check that the feature you use here are always available for a type that matches the requirements expressed here. So that's a big difference, for example, between Ada generics and C++ templates. C++ templates are checked when they are instantiated. Here, there is a contract, and if the type you provide 
matches the contract provided by the generic specification, then it will always work because the contract is checked for the implementation according to the required properties given in the specification. Such a generic is instantiated this way with, uh, so here I am writing simply procedure swap age is new swap with type age, which means that the compiler will write for me according to that template, a new procedure where every time the type, the word item appeared here, it will be replaced by H. So the instantiation, you can understand it as a kind of a macro, but it's a semantic macro, it's not text substitution. Tasking is an integral part of the language. It's not an external library. There is syntax that define task. Task is the ADA term for threat. So, and this has implication in the language because it means that every implementation of ADA is required to take care of tasking. And for example, all libraries are always reentrant and so on. Tasks are high level objects. They are declared like variables and you can make arrays of tasks. You can have tasks that are part of records or they are handled like usual uh, objects of the language. I won't have time to go into many details, but you have high level communication and synchronization features. The rendezvous uh, implements a client server model where a client calls services provided by a server task. It's a very high level concept and it's quite easy to understand. For some lower level uh, communication needs, you have protected objects that work like passive monitors and that do not, for simple cases, it avoids requiring very small tasks everywhere. And honestly, tasking is very easy to use. It's very easy to add little tasks to display a clock in an area of your screen or thing like that. In many languages, tasking is hard to use and people are reluctant to use it because if you have to deal with um, uh, semaphores or low level things like that, it's uh, a pain. Here, it's very easy to put small tasks to make your task easier and to use, uh, to use them. And as I mentioned, because ADA is used into many embedded systems, you need to access the low level. And the principle is to let the compiler do the hard work. We have seen those two levels. The same is, the, it, the same thing when you need to access the low level. First, you define a high level view. For example, I have a record that could be some data acquired from a device with a boolean telling that the device is on, a count of samples taken by the device, and a status that's an array of boolean, for example, the state of various switches on the front panel or something like that. Then you will describe the low level you can have what is called a representation clause that will specify the exact bit-by-bit -bit representation of your data. Here, I'm telling that on is at word zero, zero bit, range of bits zero to zero. So, so it's bit zero of word zero. And count is bits one to seven, and status is bits eight to 15. So in C, you bit fields just specify the size. Here, you have 
no, you leave no freedom to the compiler, you have the exact bitwise representation. So the principle is once you have described what you want at the lower level, you still work at high level. If you want to change a bit in your bit array, you write quite normally mi dot status index by three colon equal false. And that will translate into the precise machine instruction that does exactly what you want. So it's always the same principle. This time you don't let the compiler choose the representation. You impose a certain representation and the compiler will do the bridge between the high level and the low level. And if you want to go really low level, there are many things you can do. For example, here, Patching memory is very easy in ADA, but you have to tell what you do. You define a model of your memory. Here, for example, a storage array. Well, I take the, uh, six, the famous 60, 640, 640 k bytes, and I say that this array is implemented at memory address zero, so it will match directly the memory. And then I can write the peak and poke procedure simply as high level constructs. But since I have imposed the, the actual address, this will match exactly my memory. You can also include machine code. You can handle interrupts. You can do lots of low level stuff with ADA, but you have to tell it clearly. You don't divert a function like a pointer to mean that you want to access memory. You have to do, to tell what you are doing and to do what you are telling. That's the basic principle. No, nothing is hidden. You have to be explicit. A word about those annexes. It's an instance extension of the standardization process. You understand that you may need many different features for various specific domains. And since ADA is a certified compiler with a certified uh, validation suite, if everything was put into the standard, then you would need every compiler to implement everything even if the users don't want it. So it's an extension, but that's an extension only in the form of packages, pragmas, or attributes that are special values provided by the compiler. And so this provides extra features, but no language change, that's what I mean, that are intended for specific domain so there is an annex for system programming, for example. There is one for real time, one for distributed systems, which is very interesting. I made a presentation about the distributed systems annex in a previous FOSDEM, so you can retrieve it from the archive. Information systems, some business systems and that kind of systems. Numerics with guarantees on the um, accuracy of computations. Uh, I also gave a presentation on that. And safety and security annex for uh, high uh, safety systems. So what else? ADA is really a portable language, really. I mean, all those tools you find with all other languages like configure, automate, conditional compilations, just compensates for the lack of portability. If you need conditional compilation, depending on your target, then it means that even if your program works on a number of different targets, nothing proves that it will work on another architecture. Here, 
because you work at the high level and the compiler bridges to the low level, you don't have to make variations depending on the target. Even the virtual machine concept is really a workaround. It's, you, you know, Java, I heard people claiming that Java is portable. Java is not portable. Java works on only one machine, the Java virtual machine. And you have to emulate that machine on other machines if you want to run it, because it's so unportable. Being portable means that the program will work on various machines without changing the code. And that's really what EDA has achieved. Uh, well, of course, we also have compilers for virtual machine if you want. But here, all because there is a validation suite, all compilers implement exactly the same language, they are checked, and they must work the same on every machine. And those high-level constructs really protect you from the differences. So believe me, I did that. Many people experienced that. You can write a program that is 100% the same between Linux, Windows, embedded systems, uh, usual mainframes, and so on. To the point that many programs have been developed on mainframes because it was easier to develop there, then moved to embedded targets without any major problem. EDA was designed mainly for ease of reading because the program is written only once, but read much more often than it is written. But it doesn't mean it's uh, bad for writing. So there are a number of things that will help you when writing program. First of all, and especially GNAT, there are very good error messages. I keep telling people, please read the error messages. With other languages, in general, the messages, error messages are not very useful. I mean, you all have seen uh, an error in C, uh, syntax error near line 23. What does it mean? What that compiler that cannot tell me if I miss a semicolon or a closing parenthesis? With all EDA compilers have very good error messages. This is an example. For example, here I made a spelling error in the name of a variable. And the compiler tells me possible misspelling of lines because it made a substitution, some found something that was close enough that would have fit at that place. And it can even fix if you are used to equal instead of colon equal for assignment, then it will tell you. And sometimes when you see the error messages, you wonder if the compiler is reading your mind. That's really, really advanced. The features of the language will, will protect you from many mistakes, and you have to experience that to really believe it. So you will have to say that. And especially strong typing. Strong typing, the way it's done in Ada, protects you from many, many confusions, like inverting parameters in subprogram calls, confusing a pointer with a pointed at data and all those errors that can take hours of debugging to find just don't pass the first compilation. And as Ada proponents usually say, if it compiles, it works. Well, of course, it's a bit exaggerated. You still may have uh, algorithmic errors, but you don't have those stupid coding errors that you encounter in many languages. And so once you get used to the language, because of course it needs training, you need uh, to understand how it works. But once you pass the first step, you have that nice feeling that you spend your time on designing, 
thinking about your problem rather than just chasing stupid bugs because you confuse two different variables. You have a number of components and tools that are available. An interesting point is that the standard defines how to interface Ada with other languages. And you have even tools to automatically generate bindings to uh, libraries written in other languages. The net result is that all the components you can use with other languages are available with Ada. Plus some ones that are unique to Ada, some example AWS that allows you to put a web server inside your Ada program. ASIS, which is a great tool to make a tool, analysis tool for Ada code. And you'll find a number of that on good sites that um, summarize everything that's available. So, to conclude, you could expect me to tell you, oh, please use Ada. No, I won't tell you that. You are grown up people, you are free to use whatever long language you want. But I will just tell you, please try Ada. Give it a chance and see what it really means to be able to think at a higher level, think at the level of your problem, and forget all about those nasty implementation details that are now handled by the compiler. Believe me, that's very nice. Thank you for your intention. Questions and answers. You have more questions. The the room where uh, this conference, uh, this Q and A is taking place, will be opened, and you can come here um, and ask and have a longer discussion if needed with Jean Pierre. So, <clears throat> uh, the first question is regarding the type system, and um, Pavel asks uh, whether Ada is the only language or probably the most widely used language that has uh, distinguishable numeric types? Well, uh, I don't know all the languages, and you know, and when you talk about languages, you always can find some other languages doing the same thing. Um, actually, uh, as far as I know, it's the only language where you express the high level notions, of course, you can uh, embed types in records and make your own types the way you want. But here, it's more the need of expressing directly the numeric types that belong to the problem domain that make it quite unique. And as far as I know, I mm, don't know of languages that make it that simple. Of course, everything is possible with any language. Okay, thank you. Um, I, this, this question was already answered, but I would like to ask it nonetheless. Are there any tools to visualize the, uh, the packages, links, uh, and graphs and dependencies? Uh, probably that's what they meant by that. Yes, well, you have many tools. Uh, with, with GNAT in GPS, you have a tool that can visually display all the links between the dependencies and so on. Uh, thanks to the with clauses, it's especially easy to do in Ada because all dependencies are explicit. Okay, thank you. Um, uh, we have a question from Christoph. Uh, do you have training learning sessions planned shortly? Um, I can answer that and then Jean-Pierre probably has an offer to you. Um, 
we have another uh, introduction introduction to ADA, but that one is more, I would say, technical, less introductory, and assumes some programming knowledge. Um, it's going to be given this afternoon by Paul um, Jaret, and uh, it focuses on if you come from another language, how do you translate concepts to ADA? And I think that will help you a lot uh, more. We also have another introduction uh, for numeric types that GMPA will give in half an hour or so. And uh, there are learning resources. Um, but no, for this conference, we do not have anything more than that planned. However, I think GMPA can offer you something else. Uh, well, during that conference, uh, well, I don't know the whole program, of course. Uh, you can watch it again, I think, you can replay it. Um, otherwise, you will have me speak. As, uh, I think, uh, Fernando, you know the program better than I do. Now, if you're talking about uh, formal commercial training, of course, uh, Idalog has a lot to provide with that. Okay, thank you. Um... One question from uh, Pavel. Um, first of all, I think I heard about range or even singular types in the past from other sources. Second, even in C++ or Rust or even in C, you can always wrap the numeric types as a single element of a structure types. Sure, the second form is not so convenient, but still. What do you, would you comment on that? Would you say that Ada makes it more accessible or clearer or what are the pitfalls that other languages have compared to ada well i, I partly answered that uh, because it's partly the same mm. as the previous question but yes you can do you can do anything with any language the question is how it, easy it is okay um here you it's plain arithmetic you define types you define operations and you use them you do, uh, and it's the fact that it's bundled into the language pushes people to use it. What's important is that if you can do things, but it's too complicated to do it, people will just not use the feature. Here, it's natural from a physicist's point of view to define units and to have operations between units. And you don't have to define classes and methods and a whole lot of complicated things just to make sure that you don't add a time and a length. So yes, you can do it, but it's in other languages, but if it's too difficult, too inconvenient, people won't do it, that's all. Okay, thank you. Uh, we have a question or maybe a comment on, mm -hmm. on tasks uh, by Aldi, who says, I found that, that it is very hard to restart the tasks in ADA. I can easily start and stop a task, but not restart after the task has stopped. Is there a pattern that's recommended or a utility in the ADA language that you would recommend or indicate to use? I don't understand exactly what you mean. I mean, a task, when a task is terminated, it is terminated. It makes no sense to restart. You may restart an identical task, executing the same code, but it's a different object, you know? So uh, yes, it's very easy to restart task. You just declare the task and it starts. Or you can have uh, pointers to a task and then you create a task with new and it just restarts. I mean, Starting in uh, task dynamically is very easy. Uh, is it the same task or an identical task? Well, it depends on what you want to do. I don't know exactly what you had in mind there. Okay. <clears throat> Another question um, from Wilbert. In your experience in working with Ada, what are the main in in impediments companies run into, have to overcome? if they are switching to ADA from, let's say, C, C++, or something similar? Okay, uh, I would say abstraction. 
get away from the computer. In, in my training session, I always tell people, stop programming. You either of, if you use it correctly, you have great ways of modeling the problem and not thinking in terms of computers, not thinking in terms on how do I use my computer to do so and so, but really thinking in, in terms of the problem domain and expressing the problem domain. So it's really a different state of mind. It is more different than what you may think from this point of view, because you really have to, as I say, forget computing and just turn into modeling the problem domain. That's the main difference. Once people have understood that, then they feel very easy because it's so nice to, to forget about the computers. Okay, thank you. Another question from Aldi. Any free code checker and what code in the standard uh, to use for the ADA language? Any recommendations? Well, as coding standard, there is a document which is quite old now, but that formed the basis of most coding standard. It was, well, what the, the name was, it was the ADA. Boom, boom, boom. I just forgot the name, but it's the basis for most coding standards. Uh, yes, you have two checkers, and Adalog has uh, has one called uh, Ada Control. Uh, Ada Core has one called NetCheck, and a number of coding of uh, companies provide coding uh, checkers for uh, for Ada. That's easy, but uh, well, you'll find a lot of literature about that. I don't think I can uh, out of the give you every pointer out of the top of my hand, but a quick uh, Google search will find you a number of standards, certainly. Okay, and do you have any recommendation for a code checker? Oh, mine, of course. Okay. <laughs> Ada Control is, uh, well, I'm not in a good position because I have invested interest into that, but, uh, Certainly, the ADA control is one of the most uh, sophisticated ones. Uh, GNATCHEC comes, well, used to come uh, bundled with uh, GNAT. It's uh, not provided anymore currently. We can hope it will return, but it's not currently. And the other are, um, are not free. ADA control is free software. It's important and, until that. And as far as I know, they can just um, download it from your website. No? Yes, yes. It's free. So. Okay. Then uh, we have only 25 seconds left. Um, mm -hmm. Once again, I would like to thank you, Jean Pierre, for your tremendous uh, presentation. And if anybody has more complex questions or questions that did not get answered, the bot should now publish this room. And you can join this room and talk to Jean-Pierre directly and have a nicer conversation directly. Okay. Then, thank you.